Hello and welcome to another video demonstration of SimWise 4D. With any optimization study, it is necessary to define one, an objective, two, one or more simulation constraints, and three, variables or parameters that are allowed to change to meet the objective and stay within the constraint requirements. In this example, the design objective is to minimize the mass of the bracket and the constraint is that the factor of safety of the bracket does not exceed approximately 1.3. To accomplish this, we will assign three variables in the SimWise optimization which are related to three dimensions on the bracket, the gusset width, the gusset height, and the ear bottom width. SimWise optimization will automatically determine the best dimensions for these three such that the objective is met and met within the defined constraints. The bracket is restrained at two bolt holes and a notch cutout on the bottom. The upper hole supports a cantilevered shaft, thus creating a predominantly torsional load on the bracket. Here we are inside the SolidWorks model of the bracket. If we go ahead and double click the bracket, we can expose the dimensions. We're going to be assigning three of these dimensions as variables in the SimWise optimization. We have the gusset width, the ear bottom width, and the gusset height. It's very helpful to name the dimensions ahead of time before exporting the CAD model to SimWise because several dimensions may transfer over and it makes it easier when setting up the optimization when you can quickly find the dimensions you need to specify as variables. So we'll go ahead and we'll minimize this and we'll tile these two side by side so we can see what's happening. We'll go ahead and click on SimWise and export and we'll export the model into SimWise. If we move the view to a position we're comfortable with we can press the S key now that's our home view so if we ever need to return to that view we can simply press the H key. Let's go ahead and start by defining some restraints on here and I'll double click the restraint tool. If we double click it we'll stay in this mode until we tell it to exit. We'll go ahead and select the inside cylindrical faces of the hole as well as the outside spot face. On the underside of the part we'll select the faces of the cutout and then we'll right mouse click and choose select to exit that mode. Press H to go home. What we can do is click with the mouse, hold the button down, the left mouse button, and highlight all these restraints, and then simply right mouse click on any of these restraints now that they're highlighted. Choose Properties, Restraint, and change it to Face Normal. Click on Close, and we have our restraints defined. Now we'll assign a torque acting on this inside diameter here. In the physical setup, or in the real world, there's a shaft that mounts in this hole and extends outward, and there's a load acting down on the shaft, which in turn is putting a twist or a bending moment back on this bracket in the clockwise direction from this perspective. So we'll go ahead and we'll select the torque feature, click on the face, and then we can double click the constraint name to open the properties. And we'll say that this is going to be with respect to the world reference frame. So from this perspective, we'd want the torque to be acting about the y-axis. So we'll go ahead and we'll specify 0 for the x-axis and negative 7.9 e to the fourth newton millimeters about the y-axis. Lastly, we'll go ahead and we'll double click the bracket to open the material properties here and since it says custom that means there was no material specified in the SolidWorks model we could update the SolidWorks model and then export a new SimWise model to reflect that change or we could also come into the SimWise library directly and define a different material for it. Now we're ready to run a basic FEA. So we'll go ahead and select the Solve FEA button. And there we have some basic results for that particular setup. 
So now we're ready to go ahead and begin the setup of the optimization. To launch the optimization manager, we can click on Tools, Optimize Model, and to begin we establish our variables here. So under the Variables tab you'll see a list of all the variables and or dimensions that came over from the SOLIDWORKS model. We're interested in these three, the ear bottom width, the gusset height, and the gusset width. And then we'll go ahead and we'll click on each one of these and define the upper and lower boundaries for the dimensional changes. For the ear bottom width, we'll set a lower bound of 36 millimeters and an upper bound of 100. To make sure that the optimization increments in one millimeter increments in between these two uh, numbers uh, for manufacturing purposes and nominal dimension purposes, we'll go ahead and specify a number of steps equal to the range here. So we simply take the difference between 36 and 100, which is 64, and add one more, which is 65. Next we'll go ahead and we'll edit the bounds for the gusset height, and this is going to be a lower bound of 25 and an upper bound of 100. The difference there is 75 plus 1 is 76. 76 is going to dictate the number of design evaluations we establish here coming up very soon. Click OK and then lastly we'll edit the gut gusset width. We'll set a lower bound of 4 millimeters, an upper bound of 12. The difference there is 8 millimeters plus 1 which would be 9 steps. Click OK and we've established our design variables. Next we can click on the Goals tab. Here's where we'll define the objective and constraint for the simulations. We're going to use a stress meter as our constraint, so we'll go ahead and we'll close this temporarily. Right click on the bracket, Insert Meters, FEA Result. Now we have a stress meter defined in the model. We can go ahead and click on Tools, Optimize Model to return to the Optimization Manager click on goals, click on meters, and now that new meter shows up under the object list here. Click on that meter, click on maximum von Mises, and our design constraint is such that we make sure the stress is less than or equal to 2.55 e to the 8 pascals. This also correlates to approximately a factor of safety of 1.3 in comparison to the yield strength of this material. Click on Add to add that constraint. Next we'll click on Bodies, and then click on Body 2 under Object, Mass as the property, and then the objective here is to minimize the minimum mass of the material such that we are using the least amount of material for production purposes and yet maintaining a factor of safety of about 1.3. Click on Add and we add that objective in there. Next, click on Settings. Define the number of design evaluations to be 76. This way we cover all the nominal incremental uh, changes for the uh, largest dimension we had, which was the gusset height. Uncheck Simulate Motion since we're not simulating kinematics. And then check the Compute FEA and we're ready to start the optimization. Simply click the Optimize button. And once the optimization starts, you can also click on Design Table to get a real-time feedback display of what's taking place. Now we're back here after the completed simulations, which took about 7 minutes to run, 76 iterations uh, of this design, so that's not too bad. If we uh, look at the design table here, we're given different columns that we can sort by. The one that we're interested most is in the rank. If we're looking for the first rank right here, we're looking for the best possible arrangement in uh, it meeting both the objective and the constraint. So uh, this design right here with these specific dimensions is the uh, preferred design as the uh, first rank. If we go ahead and click on Set Model now, Noticed it changed the SOLIDWORKS model and also updated the SimWise model with that configuration. So let's go ahead and let's close the Optimization Manager 
and now let's click on the FEA solve button and we'll solve this particular FEA. So there we have the results for this and now there's different things we can begin doing like using H adaptive mesh refinement to fine tune the results uh, to more accurate values. This concludes this demonstration of SimWise 4D.